Today we are going to look at a compound microscope, its different parts, their functions, and the proper handling of microscope in a lab. The very first thing about the microscope, when we are handling the microscope, whether we are taking it out from the cabinet or putting it back in the cabinet, never ever hold a microscope with one hand. Always give a support to the base, and then at the back there is the arm, Hold the arm with one of your hands and then give support to the base. And then take the microscope out, put it on the table. We have to plug it in. Because we need the light source to see the object we would like to see using the microscope. For the microscope, we will start with the base. This is the support of the microscope. And then we will gradually go through the structure towards upwards. After the microscopes are plugged in, placed on the table, now we will turn on the light switch because we need the light source. I have three different microscopes. Most of the parts are same from one brand to another brand, but there are little bit differences among the different companies or the models of the microscope where the light switch and the brightness control will be located. So I have three different models microscope First one, what I have here, this is from Motik. The light switch will be on the right side. That means when you will be looking at the microscope, the ocular lenses facing towards you, the light switch will be on the right. Once you turn on the light, the brightness control knob is right below the switch. So you can control the brightness from here. Now I will go to the next model. Always remember another important thing. When you are not using the microscope, do not keep the light on. Always turn it off because the light bulbs get burned out pretty easily and they are expensive. The next one I have here, you can distinctly see the stage, the base, I'm sorry, the base is much wider compared to the first one, what I showed you. Here, this is a Meiji microscope. Look over here, the light switch is still on the base. But the location now it is on will be on the left side when you will be looking through the ocular microscope. For this microscope, the turn on and off light switch is also the same one which will control the brightness of the light source. Now the other one, what I have here, this is from a different company national the base the size of the base we can say kind of in between the other two which we have looked before for this microscope the light switch is at the very back of the microscope and then the brightness control will be on your right side when you will be looking at the ocular lens I am showing it in a different way. See, on the right side of the base, there is the brightness control knob. Here is the brightness control knob. So these are some differences when you will first start with the microscope. Now what I will do, I will use one microscope to go through the rest of the structures, their names and the functions. We can see the light is on for the microscope. 
So base, the light source. Now we are fo following upwards. This is called the condenser through which the light will now come through the stage. So this black square, this is called the stage of the microscope. We put the slide on the stage. On top of the stage, there is the mechanical stage. Also, apart from the brightness control, we can control the aperture of this light source using a knob called the iris diaphragm. Once I will move the knob, you will be able to see if you follow the light source through the stage, you will be able to see when I am controlling this lever, using this lever, I can control the amount of light coming through the light source to the stage. This is called iris diaphragm. And here I can also mention that there is a similarity with the microscope and optical instrument and our eye. In case of our eye that is being done automatically that we can control depending on the amount of light coming to our eyes we can control that uh, iris diaphragm which controls the opening that is called pupil for our human eye. We will put the slide which we would like to see under the microscope Always remember, put the slide here. This one side of the mechanical stage, you can see this is a spring clip. One side, it is fixed. So this clip will help to keep the slide in position. On the right side, there is a hanging bar. Using this bar, we can control the location of the slide. On the hanging bar, there are two knobs. The top one, when we use this knob, you can distinctly see the stage. We can bring it towards us or further away from us. The lower knob, will move the stage towards left and right because these settings are important to find where actually the object is on the slide. We will continue following upwards for the different parts. The stage could be controlled, the movement of the stage up and down using a knob on the side this is called the course adjustment so if you look over here there are actually two separate knobs the bigger one is called the course adjustment the smaller one is called the fine adjustment knob now the size of this knob might differ from microscope to microscope but the function will be same as you can see we can move the stage up and down and this is necessary these controls are necessary to focus the object clearly we are coming back here we will keep on following upwards for the different parts this area it is called rotating nose piece from where there are four hanging objective lenses so if we move this part you can see this is moving we can move it that's why it is called the rotating nose piece there are four objective lenses each of these are called objective lenses when we move the rotating nose piece we can put one particular objective lens in the position what do we mean by position so if we turn on the light so that's where the light is coming and right at the top of that light source, once you bring the particular objective lens in position, you can hear a clicking noise. That's what 
we call is in position. The first one is called the scanning lens. You always have to use the scanning lens to start with looking at a particular object or the specimen. The scanning lens has a magnification power of 4x. When we move the rotating piece, next one, now in the position, this is called the low power lens, which has a magnification of 10x. The third one is called the high power objective lens. Magnification is 40x. And the fourth objective lens is called the oil immersion lens or oil lens, which has a magnification of 100x. Unless you are specifically directed to, please do not use the 100x because these 100x objective lens or the oil immersion lens, it requires the oil for proper mounting and viewing the object. So I am putting back the scanning lens in position. When we will look through the object following up from the rotating nose piece, so nose on top of nose, these are called the eyepieces with ocular lens. The ocular lens, as the distance between the two eyes varies from individual to individual, we can adjust the distance between the two ocular lenses. These ocular lenses each have some magnification, total of 10x. When we are looking at an object, when once it is focused properly, it will be magnified twice. Once with the objective lens in position, then the second level of magnification with the ocular lens, which is fixed no matter what objective lens we are using. And this is why these microscopes are called the compound microscope. And for these microscope, as there are two ocular lenses or eyepieces, this is a binocular compound microscope. So these are all the different parts of the microscope. I will come to the other side of the microscope to show you if you come over here, on this side, you will be able to see the size of the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment distinctly different or separate.